In other news today, the National Assembly Speaker of the of Peace in Kakura has assured South Africans that Parliament remains fully committed to its ongoing implementation of the State Capture Commission's recommendations. Parliament's presiding officers met with the Chief Justice Raymond Zondo yesterday. After last week, he accused the legislature of failing to implement some of the recommendations in the report that he authored. The National Assembly Speaker denying what he says. She says they've developed a comprehensive plan structured around four key focus areas, including parliamentary oversight and accountability. Our senior political reporter, Zianda Nobel, joins me now in our studio. Zianda, good afternoon to you. There's a lot going on here. Let's just be very clear. <laughs> There's a lot of context to all of this yes. as well. Let's start at the beginning. What do the presiding officers, the speakers in, of the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces say Parliament is doing to make sure Parliament would stop state capture from happening again? So there was a, 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 a sort of a presentation that the National Assembly Speaker gave during that briefing, basically saying there were 11, uh, there were 19 recommendations that were made, 11 have since been implemented. But there are two, I think, that have been highlighted the most. One, the recommendation to have an oversight committee over the president and the presidency, but also looking at how the, uh, you know, the majority party uses its majority um, in instances where it could be just shielding people from taking accountability. On the issue of having a committee in the presidency, they say they've done desktop research and they found that it wasn't sufficient enough. So they'll have to go. They've looked at case studies in the UK and India and they found that, um, you know, in the UK there's somewhat of a liaison committee where the Prime Minister actually makes a presentation at least three times a year. So they're looking at different models, but no clear timeline. So let's hear what the National Assembly speaker said earlier. Parliament has considered establishing a committee to oversee aspects of the presidency not currently supervised by existing structures as recommended by the Commission. The Parliamentary Budget Office conducted research to identify aspects of the presidency budget not currently subjected to parliamentary scrutiny. The Parliamentary Budget Office concluded that Parliament should strengthen its oversight over the presidency and recommend further research. Okay, so further research. Zianda, I mean, one of the issues around this is that some of the people who make these decisions, who are themselves MPs, also have findings against them in the Zonda Commission. And they're still, they're all ANC MPs, I should point out, they're all still there. Yes, so um, there was actually a question, a pointed question for an example, Cedric Frolic, who was the chair of chairs. Remember, part of what the, the Chief Justice found when he was chairing that commission was that sometimes even these MPs do not have the capacity to be in the positions that they hold. And so for someone like Cedric Frolic, who was also implicated and who's the chair of chairs where the chairpersons report to him, um, it became a problem. But the National Assembly Speaker spoke about, you know, uh, members who were referred then to the ethics committee some were cleared and it would seem that someone like Frolic has been cleared of course not going into details about someone like Azizigod uh, Agueda Mandasha for an example who were implicated and what would happen to them so let's hear what she said in that regard the presiding officers referred six members of parliament to the joint committee on ethics and members interest and an additional six were sent by an external entity. Now, to date, the committee has found against three MPs, cleared five, whilst two are still under consideration. At least two MPs have since resigned from Parliament and therefore fall outside of the scope of the application of the Ethics Code. So, the, end of the, the key criticism from Judge to the Chief Justice last week, speaking, of course, in his position as chair of the committee, of the um, commission, was that Parliament had not done enough to make sure that Parliament could not allow state capture to happen again. Yes. You made the point in today's press conference, as I understand it, that during in Kandla, the ANC used its majority, um, and again, during the state capture era, the ANC used its majority st to stop investigations. So, how did they respond to your question that Parliament at this stage, according to Judge Sondra, would allow state capture to happen again. I must say, Stephen, it wasn't the most pointed of responses because 
They're basically from Emma's Masondo, Sylvia Lucas, and Nosivirma Pisangakula. They said, well, parliament cannot be blamed for how parties use their majority because we are in a majoritarian system. And so if that particular party at the time decides to make a particular decision, then that is, that is part of the tenets of democracy. However, my follow-up question was that the chief justice or the chair of the commission at the time, he was seemingly inviting you to imagine and move beyond that to have safeguards as parliaments for if this majority in um, you know parliament is being abused or is flagrantly against the democratic project like in Angela where public funds were used for one person's personal gain what do you do in that instance does parliament not have a responsibility to respond to that and the national assembly speaker basically saying that they also engaged the chief justice around this because it came up during their meeting yesterday and that um, there's not much that they can do when it comes to that. In fact, they would say that the Chief Justice should rather engage with political parties and the conduct of their members and civil society in this regard. But as it stands, the system is the way it is, not forgetting. And she even made reference. She said, you know, during the tenure of uh, former President Jacob Zuma, without using his name, you know, the eight, nine motions of no confidence, and that following that experience, they then developed those rules about... Um, um, you know, what an impeachment process should look like, which is exactly what they followed with the Section 189 process um, looking into now the Pala Pala matter. And she was basically saying that we went through the process so procedurally Parliament had actually done what it needed to do. It cannot be her fault or those of her officials that the ANC decided not to proceed then with that Section 8-9 report after that panel led by former Chief Justice Sandy Lengobo not to proceed. And, and that was the response. Zinder Ngobo, thank you very much indeed. One gets the sense it's probably not the last word on this matter. There'll be a response from someone.